Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at a RAV Power power bank. This was sent to me for review and it's around 20,100 milliamp hour. Now you might look at this and think, well, why does it have the weird shape? Well, believe it or not, it actually has an AC socket on the top. What does that mean? Well, it means we can get our laptop here, plug it in and the laptop starts charging. Pretty impressive, right? Now, depending on which country you buy this in and the specific model you buy, you might find that the socket on top is different and the output voltage is different because they actually have a 110 volt version of this and a 220 volt version. Now, for things like laptop chargers, cell phone chargers, camera battery chargers, things like that. Most of these, if you look at the back, they say they can take anywhere from 100 volts to 220 or 240. So all of these will work whether you buy the 110 volt version or the 220 volt version. Where you might see a problem is if you use something like this AC fan. Now, the one I've got right here is a 110 volt version. If I plug this fan in, and this fan is designed to run on 220 volts, you'll see that it doesn't quite work properly. Now you can see that it's spinning, but it's spinning much slower than it's meant to because this is designed to be run on 220 volts, but the power bank's only outputting 110 volts. So when you are choosing the specific model that you want to buy, make sure you buy the right one. Um, because like I said, while you won't have problems with most laptop chargers, battery chargers, cell phone chargers, etc., there are some things where you'll have an issue if you get the wrong voltage. I highly recommend that you check the specs of whatever you're plugging in first to make sure it's gonna be compatible. If you buy the 220 volt version of this and then plug in something that only works on 110 volts, you're probably gonna damage whatever you plug in. So that's something to be aware of. Now here I've got a Canon battery charger for one of my cameras. If I plug this in, you can see that it starts charging. No problems there, the orange light is on. I also have my cell phone charger here. If I plug this in, now you might be thinking, well, why would you plug a cell phone charger in? Because you could just use a regular USB power bank for that. Well, that's true, but this charger here is a special dash charger, which is much faster than your standard USB output. This is actually five volts, four amp. So plugging it into the AC outlet would actually charge my cell phone much faster. Now, aside from the AC outlet, you do also have a USB port, traditional USB port, and a USB-C type, which can output up to 15 watts, I believe, on the C type and five volts, 2.4 amp on the standard USB port. So yes, in some situations you might just want to use the USB port, but for my specific cell phone, it's much quicker if I use the supplied AC charger. Now I could keep plugging different devices into this, showing you that it charges the laptop, charges the camera batteries, charges the cell phone, it runs the fan, everything like that, but you already know how an AC outlet works. You plug stuff in and it works. But what you should know is that the maximum continuous load on this is 60 watts. So a lot of TVs, for example, might only be 35 or 40 watts. That would be fine. But if you plug, say, a projector into this, many of those consume 300 or 500 watts. So that wouldn't work with this. You are limited to a continuous load of 60 watts on the AC output. So depending on what you're planning to charge, I mean, a lot of people, when they buy this specific power bank, they're going to have one thing in mind. I want to charge this specific load laptop or I want to use it for my, I don't know, maybe recharging a DJI drone battery, something like that. So you can check the wattage that it consumes and make sure it's going to be compatible with this device. Now inside it's using a modified sine wave inverter. What that means is that anything that has a motor, for example this fan, is going to spin a little bit slower, it's going to generate extra heat and it's going to have a little bit of noise and eventually it could cause damage to the motor. So it's generally not recommended for things like AC fans, although I run AC fans on modified sine wave inverters all the time. Um, another thing it's not recommended for is like sensitive medical equipment. For those kind of uses, you want to use a pure sine wave inverter. It might work, but it's really not recommended to run sensitive medical equipment on modified sine wave inverters. Now, something I'm curious about is what happens if I plug in something that really consumes a lot of power, like this hairdryer. I haven't tried this yet, and I'm just gonna try it and see what happens. I assume it's got protection against this, but let's find out. So I'll put it on the first setting and we'll see what happens. Okay, it turned on for a couple of seconds and then the inverter turned off. I assume it's turned off automatically to protect itself. So let's see if it turns back on. Well, that's not very good. It's not turning back on. 
Hmm, that's not very good at all because I still have to return this thing to RAV power so that other people can review it. Um, what I'll do is I'll just leave it a minute. It might have like some kind of thermal cutoff. So yeah, I'll just leave it a minute and see if it starts working again. Okay, it's turned back on again. So it must have some kind of like timeout period where if you overload it, it won't turn on again for a certain amount of time. But you can see the green light is back on again. So it does appear to have some kind of protection. Let's just try it one more time just to make sure. We'll put it on the top setting this time. Again, it ran for a few seconds. I'm not sure if it actually managed to heat up the hairdryer. Anyway, let's wait a minute and then see if the inverter will turn back on again. Oh, in fact, I've noticed it has the status lights flashing at the front. So I guess that's a warning that something's not quite right. Um, and then eventually it resets itself. So that's okay. Now, while that's resetting, I'll tell you what else you get in the box, because um, I forgot to tell you at the beginning. You get this AC charger. It doesn't charge by micro USB like a traditional power bank. It uses this charger here. Now, this is a 19 volt, 1.6 amp charger, so potentially up to 30 watts, um, although I believe it doesn't actually consume the full 30 watts. So this is the charger that it comes with. It's got a little barrel jack here. Um, if you saw the unboxing video, you already know a lot of this. I'll also link to that unboxing video in the video description down below. You get a nice soft case like this. This goes in here. This is traditional RAV power. They always provide a little soft case. But aside from that, you also get this like semi hard case. But I think most of the time people would carry it around just in the soft case because you don't really need to carry the charger and everything like that. You just need to carry the unit itself. Anyway, I think we've spoken enough about this. Now let's put it to the test, check the capacity, the maximum output, everything like that. So now we're gonna test if this truly is 20,100 milliamp hour. To do that, we've got a USB watt meter and a USB dummy load. So let me plug this in and I'll zoom in on the watt meter. And you can see it's currently at 4.9 volts just over one amp and we're drawing 5.1 watts. So we'll just leave this going and then this will actually measure over the total amount of time how much power we were able to draw out and then we'll know if this is a genuine capacity or not. So the power bank has stopped outputting power and we can have a look at the results. Now if we zoom in on the power bank, you can see it's rated at 20,100 milliamp hour or 74.37 watt hours. So let's take a look at what we actually got out of it. I'll zoom in on my watt meter. So you can see we managed to draw out 57.325 watt hours. Now, that means that we actually only got around 77% of the stated capacity. Normally you'd expect around 10 or 15% losses um, because you're going from 3.7 volts of the internal battery up to five volts. But that's basically 23% off the advertised rate. So I'm actually not very happy with that. So what I'm going to do is fully charge the power bank and do this test again. Because what I'm worried about is I may have left the AC inverter turned on and that's always consuming power when it's turned on, even if you don't have anything plugged in. So it's possible that I left the AC inverter turned on and that use some of the power. So I'm going to charge this up and do the test all over again. So through the magic of editing, I was able to do the test all over again and show you the results. So let's zoom in on the watt meter. You can see that we got 56.383 watt hours, which is pretty close to our first test. And honestly, I'm not impressed. That means it's about 25% away from the advertised watt hour rating or the milliamp hour rating. Normally what we expect is around 10 to 15% losses, and that's to do with the way that the internal battery voltage is upped to five volts for the USB output. So normally we expect 10 to 15% difference between the advertised rate and what we get out. But 25%, that's just too far off. I'm not very happy about that at all. Now 56 watt hours is still okay and it's still a very usable power bank, but you have to set your expectations. Um, I don't know if maybe I just got unlucky with this demo unit. Perhaps your one actually performs better. There could be some, you know, some variation between different models, but yeah, I'm not super impressed with that result. Now let's use my AC watt meter to measure the input charge rate. So let's plug this in, change this to watts. Okay, so right now it's measuring, there we go. Now I was expecting to see a little bit higher than that because this is rated at, let me see, 
19 volts, 1.6 amp. So I was expecting to see something closer to 30 watts. Although I'll just leave it for a minute and then come back and see what it settles on. So it's been about a minute and it seems to have settled at around 23 or 24 watts. Now we're measuring on the AC side. Remember we've got some losses here. So there might only be say 20 or 22 watts going into this power bank. So that's pretty much comparable to Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 because I can get 23, 24 watts with QC 3.0. Um, not quite as high as I hoped. I was hoping to get the full 30 watts, but it will charge it pretty quick to be fair. And what I do is start a timer so we can measure how long this takes to fully recharge this power bank. So the power bank is now fully charged and it took around 3 hours 45 minutes so that's a pretty reasonable charge time. So what we'll do to test the maximum output of the socket is run this bulb here through a dimmer switch. So right now it's consuming around 26 watts. Let's make it brighter. Okay we're up to around 38, 40 watts, and in fact I've maxed out my dimmer. Now this bulb here is actually designed for 220 volts or 230 volts instead of 110. Um, so it's actually making this really difficult to test because most of my stuff is actually 220 volts and this is only a 120 volt power bank. Like I said, for things like laptops, phone chargers, etc., uh, drone battery chargers, it doesn't matter, but for things like light bulbs, AC fans and so on, there's a bit of a problem testing them for me. So as you saw there, the results weren't too bad. I'm not very happy about the capacity results, but everything else was pretty much okay. I have another one from RAV Power, a bigger version, which also has an AC outlet, and that one performed much better on the capacity test. This one performed quite badly. And that's something you have to consider. If your laptop already has a really big battery, this might only extend it by say 30% or 40%, if you have an Ultrabook, you're probably, you know, you might be able to get it to 100%, maybe more than once. But if you have a high-end laptop with a really large battery, you might only see 40% or 50% battery or less. Um, so you have to bear that in mind. This is going to extend your use, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be able to go, say, three days without plugging into the wall. Um, of course, the nice thing is that you can recharge this in about four hours or just under four hours. So, you know, you can keep charging it, take it out with you, charge it, take it out with you, extend your day, basically. Now, if your primary reason for buying something like this is just to charge your laptop, you might find that other power banks out there do it better because there are power banks out there which can output, say, 19 volts DC or 20 volts DC, whatever the typical voltage is for your laptop. They normally have like a range of voltages and those are more efficient because it's DC to DC instead of DC to AC to DC. Um, for those that don't know much about electricity, that might not mean much, but there are more efficient ways of doing it. But having an AC outlet in your power bank is just immensely convenient just because the multitude of things you can plug in without having to worry, is it going to work? Um, you know, most of these really are multi-voltage um, and they'll work with pretty much any AC outlet around the world. So they'll also work with this, just some things that won't like sensitive medical equipment that you wouldn't want to use with this. So I think that pretty much sums it up. If you are interested, you can find this inside the Philippines on Lazada and in the UK and the US, you can find it on Amazon. I will put links in the video description down below. By the way, I apologize if I haven't had much energy in this video. Uh, I shot a video earlier today. It cost me money, it cost me time and then I lost the video. It got corrupted because of a bug in an application called AirDroid, which lets you copy files from your phone to your computer. And this is actually the second time this bug has got me and I've completely lost my video. So I'm not in the happiest of moods. Um, but still, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.